this, and when she does that, we're on. We're on. We are live at 11.05. I'm BC. This is Spirit Cars. And this little live at 11.05 is brought to you by spiritcars.com. So go there and check it out, all the things. There you that's, go. See, we, I got that in there. Now that's my new opening. And this is Gary. Hi. From r &E Paint Supply. Absolutely. Which would be r &E, Give it this. Come on, give us the thing. It's r &E, It's repaintsupply.com. repaintsupply.com. And you are the, the internet guru there. Well, I do a lot of it, yes. And we were, we've just been reminiscing. Absolutely. You've been, we've been reminiscing 22 years worth. Exactly. And I've been here a little longer than that, so I've been giving you some backfill. But you've been at R&E for? I've been there since 1995. 95. So 22 years, yeah. Absolutely. So you were inside the store, sales a little bit, and now, now you're the internet guy. I do internet sales. I do outside sales. Uh, just whatever needs to be done, I, I help take part in that. So. Lots of cool stuff. And you, I was stuff. over. I hadn't seen you for a long time. A long time. It's like a we're year. We're in Flip in and we don't go to. And I went for Rodney's. We're doing the flames on Rodney's car. Right. So ghost flames. Right. Ghost flames. So I went and I got to go in the back. Yep. <laughs> we don't. We don't have a mixing uh, room anymore. A lot of body shops will have a mixing where you mix your own paint. We don't do enough of that anymore. So we went in the back and uh, we're picking all the colors and checking it out and doing here and right. You're weighing out grams and half grams and. Yeah, yeah. He 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 had to come in and to the candy store and get all the different yeah, kinds of candy. candy right? Yeah, that's right. We have candy <laughs> colors and sure. So that's uh, I was saying all that to say that you sell that online, right? Uh, we we can we can get anything you need. Uh, mostly most of our stuff is packaged in aerosol cans, that sort of thing. But if you have some custom needs, definitely give us a call. So what's the uh, brand there? Pardon me. What's the brand we're? Uh, we're PPG. Uh, PPG Industries, um, we sell a lot of, basically everything PPG sells. Uh, platinum, we're a platinum dealer for the United States. So, um, house of Colors? We do some House of Colors, absolutely. Got a lot of House of Color products. Um, and you can check us out online, www.repaintsupply.com. Or you can give us a call. Phone number is 1-800-316-6595. Wow, that's a serious commercial now. I'm telling you, that is a sales well, pitch. You had, you had enough. Custom stuff. I had to ask. I'm like, who's doing all the custom work? And it's a small town, so right. it's a big world. So, right. if you're, if, especially if you're in a small town, check it out. Um, it's a great way to get products that you, it's hard to get, right. and you can get it online. It's, it's come a long way. So when you first started, yep. I know all the cans used to say for, for for professional use only. Absolutely. Do they say that anymore? They still say that. They are really geared for the professional. Um, a lot of the reason is... I don't believe that anymore, though. I'll, okay. Go ahead. But a lot of the reason is, is for safety. Safety issues, uh, you know, if you're spraying paint, if you're spraying those kinds of products, you really need lung protection. You need uh, coveralls, that sort of thing. A lot of guys don't use them, but it is really highly required, or recommended that you wear that stuff. So for your own protection. Absolutely. You sell to a lot of people off the street. We sell to a lot of people off the street. Percentages-wise, how many off the street now? Uh, I'm going to say probably 60-40. Probably 60% of ours is professional business, 40% is walk-in off the street. Yeah. 20 years ago, it wasn't like that. No. 30 years no. ago, 40 years ago. Yeah, you, you start going back 20, 30, 40 years ago, I mean, it was 90% professional yeah. only. So it's changed. You can do it at home. That's why we do these videos. Absolutely. It's, we do it at home. So we, we got a Model A frame here. And I'm going to, this is fixing to go tomorrow. I'm putting it all together. I painted it. I didn't paint it. I, I primed it. Mm -hmm. On the back of this, I'm going to just show this off. The Model A frame would break off right here. But he wanted a gas tank out the back like a 32. So we took like the back of what would be 32 rails and we kind of made this this thing, we set a body on here, so this will actually have the gas tank coming off the back like a 32, but it's on a Model A. Right. All that being said, what am I going to do? i got some bare metal. What do i got to do to make that paint If you've got there? bare metal, uh, the absolute best thing you can do is sandblast. If sandblasting is not something that you really have access to, uh, maybe you don't have the availability to sandblaster, um, you know, we're looking to sand it as best we can, wire wheel brush, if, you know, in all the nooks and crannies, get all of the gunk off of it, all of the rust needs to come off of it. It needs to be clean. That's the biggest thing. Uh, there are some chemical processes that you can use that will actually help clean that. Uh, if you're interested in that, definitely give us a call and help you out with that. Um, once you get it clean, epoxy primer. 
epoxy primer. Make sure it's a two-part epoxy primer. That's going to be your most durable product that you can put direct to that bare metal. So it's epoxy primer, but it's not just epoxy primer. It's a DP product. Right. It's DPG. got two activators. Why has it got two activators? Uh, there's two activators because DP actually, they have a DP-401, which is direct to metal. Uh, it is designed to have the right dry time. You have an activation process. And then they also there's make an a, induction time. So you there mix is, it and you got to wait like 15 minutes before exactly, you spray it. Exactly, an induction time. Uh, they make a, actually, they make a 402 that does not have an induction time. You can use it direct to metal, but the 401 actually works better. So it's got an acid etching, I'm sure. Uh, it, it actually glues itself, so it, it bites so tight that it's almost like an etching process. Uh, it, it, it actually glues itself to the bare metal, and once it's on there, it's almost impervious. It is a very, very bulletproof system. Once it's on, once it's dry. Once it's on, once it's cured. Until it's cured, it's, I can probably and what, scrape yeah, it off my nails. You know, say three to five days out, you know, it's going to be a little soft, a little gummy. It doesn't sand well. Uh, so it's not the product you want to be for building up and right. trying to sand it. Um, and it does, and part of the reason is, is it's, when you can sand on it, it, it will either be a little bit gummy or if you wait long enough, it's going to sand like a brick. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to want to be sanding on that product. And you're not got much build. It's, a, it's right. almost like a sealer more than a primer. It's more, more, more like a sealer. That's exactly Just right. Just think about it. We could talk about and metal for probably a half hour here. Absolutely. There's, there's different there's ways so to do it, ways. lots of different ways to do it. Absolutely. This is fast and easy. Absolutely. Fast and easy. Probably the Actually, best It process. is fast and easy. A uh, little pricey, not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. It's all pricey. If you don't consider $1,000 for a gallon of paint too right. expensive, it's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Just another color. We got lots of paint jobs going. Absolutely. But let's lots go of. to, I think we got one in primer. Okay. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on this way. All right, so this thing been assembled on the bigger cars. We like to put them together, get them going. The customer got it, brought it back. Sure. We got it all. We built all the parts, and he's like, okay, I got it here. Now we're going to paint it. Okay. Uh, it this is probably about body. Right. What kind of primer job? Uh, for fiberglass, uh, I'm assuming gel coated fiberglass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for that, there's a couple of different processes that you can use. You can use a polyester primer, which works well with the gel coated system. Uh, what actually works, I personally think, maybe right, on, a, on a polyester. Better. Actually, when you say fiberglass, fiberglass is just the strands in it. Right. What holds it all together is polyester. The exactly. gel coat is polyester. The resin is polyester. It's a polyester product. And we actually buy a polyester primer, primer yeah, sure. that when we sand some of our mold seam lines, we put a polyester primer on it. It's a good build. It gets hard. Mm -hmm. Not the product you want to use if you're just doing a paint job. Right. Yeah, a better choice is really a 2K urethane. That's going to be your best choice. Uh, it, it, it dries so much better. It sands so much better. Um, it's just an all-around better product for that particular process. It's, it's a build. It builds up nice, sands well, that's, and that's what you want. You so want to make a primer sealer, but then there's a primer, primer filler. Yes, primer surfacer. Primer surface. We call them primer surfacers, uh, filler primer, primer filler. I mean, there's a lot of terms meaning can mean the same thing. Not always, but they can mean the same thing. What you don't want to use is you don't want to use lacquer primer. Bad choice for this type of application. I had it described to me a long time ago. Probably one of the PP. I've been to a PPG uh, certification. I used to have gold in the whole right. thing. We'd go every the gold man. What right. is it? Once, once a year, every couple of years. A couple of years, yeah. You had a, and it's a good, it's a good program. Absolutely. It's a great program. Absolutely. First off, you got to be X amount of years in the trade mm -hmm. before it even counts. You just don't go to the certification and say, "Oh, I learned it in the book." Right. And then there's a, is it still three a bronze and then a silver and then a gold or do you even do that anymore? Uh, you know, they they kind of dropped it and then they kind of come back to it. I, I don't know where they're at right at the moment. I lost my gold jacket, so I don't know if otherwise I'd be have my jacket. Right. So, I was going somewhere with that, but I'm not sure where. I'm not sure. But learn, <laughs> learning all the products and uh, 
heat sheets on them all and, sure. and the different, just getting your primer ready, man. Yeah. We got a frame over there with some epoxy primer. Epoxy primer yeah. on it. DP, we got a body here with some filler primer. Sure. Sanding, 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 blocking, blocking, Lots blocking. of sanding, lots of blocking. We probably don't want to go into sanding and all that. That could be another half hour. That's, yeah, a <laughs> lot, lot of time. There. Oh, this is where I was going. I, I do come around these big rabbit trails. I think I learned it at one of your one of your seminars. The difference between lacquer primer and a urethane primer sure. is the difference between concrete and a dirt road. Exactly. On a dirt road, it'll get hard. In the summertime, it dries out and it is hard, and you can drive on it. Right. Maybe a little dusty or whatever, but sure. Once it rains and the water hits it, it turns to mud again. Exactly. And you can wet it, and it'll be mud. Right. Lacquer. I don't care if it's a hundred-year-old nitrocellulose lacquer. Right. You can wet it with the thinner, and gonna, it will get soft. It's going to get yummy. And, and you can wipe it, and you can get color on your rag. And yep. now, a urethane or a 2K or whatever, it's an activated. And once you activate it, it, it kind of falls into place, and all them they molecules kind of and they lock together. It's like concrete. Right. And some of these products, the longer you let it go, the harder it gets. Harder it gets. It's like Roman concrete. Right. I mean, it's oh, better it's now than it was when they poured right. it. Right. So, and then it's sometimes it's like buffing that floor too if exactly. you wait too long. It can be. Yeah. So windows. Tell me about windows. About windows. Uh, windows. How long do I got before I need to sand oh, that, that okay. epoxy primer? Uh, epoxy primer. It depends on the epoxy primer that you're using. They make a lot of different types. Uh, depends on the type of catalyst that you're actually using or hardener that you're actually using in that. Um, most of the time you're going to have anywhere from about three days up to seven days, depending on the product. Uh, and what that means is you need to either put something on there prior. If you wait longer than that, you're going to have to sand it. You're going to have to get on it with probably 180 grit or something like that, uh, 220. Uh, I would look definitely at your piece sheet, what it's recommending as far as the type of filler primer that you're putting over that epoxy, find out what kind of grit scratch that it recommends. I would highly recommend that. Look and see what it recommends. Most of them is going to be 180 to 220. So then you're going to sand that epoxy primer with 180. The other thing that you need to make sure is that you've got enough product on. If you don't get enough epoxy primer on, and then you have to come back and sand it, you're sanding a lot of product off and then you're going to get it too thin, which can actually fail in the future. So you want to make sure... There's a tendency to lift between If you see and say, yes. I've got this clear, and I sand through my clear and want to clear back over it, I could potentially lift on the area that I've sanded through. You or, could potentially lift. And that's a long window, seven days. It, yes. Uh, so, okay, now I'm going to sand this thing. I'm going to all sand it down to 400, and the, mm -hmm. the grit matters because what will happen, the paint will fill that that cavern, right? If it's a 40 grit cavern or it's a 600 exactly. grit cavern, it's still, there's still something there. There's something there. Yeah. You've you gouged it with that sandpaper. Sure. And what's going to happen when you put the product in there, it's going to shrink. Exactly. It's and going to shrink. Uh, I think there's, what is there, a 30 day window for 90% dry or? Yeah, you know, it, with a, I would highly recommend if you're wanting to do a super nice job with uh, 2K urethane primer and you've got epoxy primer underneath it, I would recommend 30 days before I paint that thing. Um, can you do it quicker? Yes, you can do it quicker. There's, there is a chance that once that thing sits out in the sunlight and it gets nice and hot, uh, I did, things I did start moving. I did a one good. time. It was from the, thir the 30, from the 60s. Straighten that thing out and, I mean, all winter long had that thing in the, yeah. I mean, I had probably 45 days before I painted it. Right. Put it out in the sun in the summertime, and it shrunk up. It shrunk up. Yep, you can see it. Yep, we're gonna. We got a Rodney car. But we're gonna go this way over here, though. So we got the ghost flames. You can't even see. I can barely see them here from this angle. But yep. Well, let's let's go. Right. Let's go this way and start all the way down here. I think I have a piece somewhere. Okay. Piece sheets right here. I, I knew I brought them out. Okay. Tell me all about pea sheets. All While you tell me sheets. about pea sheets, 
Okay. I gotta get the yellow book. All right. So tell, tell all these folks about pea sheets. <laughs> pea sheets. There's a lot of information, and when you go and you buy product from a store like ours or other, another PPG dealer, there, there's a lot of product information sheets that you can get, and you want to make sure that you ask for these uh, because they have a lot of detailed information on there that tells you how to mix it. It gives you the dry times. It gives you the temperature that it should be running at. Um, and it tells you the hardeners that you need to mix with it. It gives you the ratio how to mix it. So you definitely want to, you definitely want to make sure you refer to that pea sheet uh, for that particular product. Um, and which you, you know what I found? I was going to harass you. Maybe I was going to harass right. you a little bit. I've done a lot of different things. I've done tables where you pour it, and you know them thick tables where sure. you see. And I've sure. done different and R and D different. Yeah. I'm yep. just a curious kind of guy. I like to try a bunch of different things. Right. So, and um, there's a seven phone call rule. This is this is an FYI. This is the stuff for the you know the seven phone call rule. No, I don't. You want to find out anything? Just start calling. Okay. Gotcha. And probably seven phone calls. You are going to find an expert. Right. That knows about it. And when you find an expert that knows about what you want to learn about. People like to talk about what they know about. Sure, they sure. do, and and they, you will find the most helpful person. So be nice to them first six people, Excellent. even though some of them may be real buttheads, because <laughs> right. it's going to take them six people to get to the seventh. Get you one. to the seventh one, right? So that being said, most of these chemics, chemists that are making this stuff, mm -hmm. they don't have a clue what to do with it. That is true. They in don't. Cases. They have. They are just. They're looking for people to figure out what to do with it. And I'm not joking there. They're seriously, oh, you can do it for that? Good. How much can we sell you? And they're not even the salespeople. They're just right. mixing exactly. stuff together to see what it does. So a lot of times, yes, I agree, go with the pea sheet. Right. But just because it says it doesn't make it so. Doesn't make that that's the only way. The only way to do it. Right. Just, sure. Yeah. Just There's other ways to get around and do different things. Right. And, and a lot of times, not to pick on you. In Not me personally. In but general, right. let's pick on the EPA. I got you. They demand the impossible. And in demanding the impossible, you at least lie to them and go, oh, we've achieved that. Right. And pass it on down to us and go, no, it works. We've tested it. It works fine. It works every time. Right. Especially when we move to the newer uh, base code, clear codes, and, and some of that stuff was... It was a trial and error in the field, and there was a lot of back and forth of, wait a minute, this ain't working. Right. Oh, yeah, you just ain't doing it right. But it is, paint has come a long way. Sure. Huge. Absolutely. I mean, are you, you're post lacquer, right? Yeah, I'm, I kind of come in after the lacquer days. And you're post, well, you're like, you got in there at enamels? Acrylic oh, yeah, enamels. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Acrylic enamels, is there even a place for that anymore? Uh, PPG's done away with most acrylic enamels. You can still get shop line acrylic enamel or omni acrylic enamel, but the high end acrylic enamels, there's not really a high end acrylic enamel anymore so, that I'm aware of. I, I, I think uh, DuPont and Exalta has dropped their product as well. So. Old, old, old. Gotcha. You probably need to get Josh in the office there. Okay. I'm going to say hi to the FedEx guy. I say hi. <laughs> So we have moved to a base coat, clear coat, urethanes, it's the happening thing. Mm -hmm. A great product. Mm -hmm. It sprays like the old lacquers used to, yeah. and it gets hard, it's easy to work with. Right. It's come a long way. Painting is much easier than it used to be. You really kind of needed to be a professional right. to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Got lots of stuff here. Window on, okay, I've got to sand it okay. on the sealer. Why do I need a sealer between my my primer? Uh, so if you've got a 2K primer and you're going to a sealer, I mean, it's a good idea because you're going to get more color holdout. Uh, you're going to get... Color holdout, what does that mean? Okay, basically, it's the, the, you're going to hold a better gloss. It's going to hold a better gloss for a longer period of time. Um, what we found is if you take and spray paint directly... Another thing, if you spray paint directly over primer, which will work, by the way, you spray it directly over a urethane primer and you get it outside, actually it's going to take a lot more paint for one thing. Uh, sealer will actually prevent you from using as much paint and sealer is actually 
in a lot of cases, it's cheaper than, than actual color. So you're better off to put that sealer on there, prevent, because primer actually absorbs like a sponge almost. It absorbs a lot of that base coat up. And uh, because it's, it's, it has talc fill to fill up the imperfections. So the sealer will actually seal that off. Well, that, now that's a whole other subject right there. Um, I threw the black epoxy primer on there. Sure. There is like no UV value in that. Absolutely it, none. It sucks up water like it ain't nothing. If it's you put it outside, porous. it's going to start de degradating it's immediately. Immediately. Yeah. You don't now, want to epoxy and put it outside. Now you, you want, want okay, the old rat rod look. Yeah, oh, it's, it, it looks black like for a minute, but it won't stay. But now you got hot rod, hot rod paint, hot rod paint. Mm -hmm. It's so it has come a long it's way. It's come a long way, it's for sure. So that's a that's a two part. Paint, I'm sure it's a urethane type paint. Absolutely, it? it is urethane. So it's just got a flattener in it? And yeah, they, they've that got that a flattener one. actually built in there. And it actually holds up much better. Much than, better. Than even the old acrylic enamels and that sort of thing. Much, much stronger product. So we we use a lot of base coat clear coats right away. Right. Before we move away from the sealer, do we need to unload or something? Or? No, it needs to be loaded. We can finish this up. We got something. What needs to be looked at? Are we damaged? I don't know. It's from Summit Racing, and to be honest, there's a little old-looking spot on it. Okay, we got a transmission ready to come in and get painted green. This color green, this right color here. Green. Yeah. So we got the base coat. We can tint our sealer, tintable right. sealers. Right. And it matters if I got a white sealer under here, or if I got a black sealer, or if I got a gray sealer, or if I got whatever color sealer. This is a bit of a transparent color. It's transparent color. It's gonna it's gonna change the change the color of the car. Absolutely. This here, it's not a true candy, but it's it looks like a candy. Mm -hmm. So instead of a tri coat, it's a it's a two stage paint. It's right. a base, it's a clear. base clear finish. Yeah. So we get our base down, and we got to get our clear. Yeah, I like clear even on solid colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll even put clear on black now. Makes it much more durable. And much more durable. UV protection, I think, is better. It's better, for sure. And um, sand and buff ability. Sand and buff. If you got an issue, you just sand and buff it. Sand and buff. Yep, exactly. So where do we buff at now? Where do we buff at? Yeah, back in the lacquer days, 600 was awesome. Oh yeah, With grinding compound. Yeah, so we no, use grinding no, no, compound no, no, in a big no, no, wool no. pad. No, we definitely don't want to do that. I mean, I do. At, at, at the bare minimum, we're looking for. 1500 I like 2000 grit or 2500 grit even better. It makes your buffing, your actual compounding time so much easier. Makes a much cleaner, much nicer paint job. To and catch it in the window. Yes. It's yeah. so much easier because it, uh, you're, you're not really um, grinding off the paint like you used to be with a coarse compound. Right. I think you're chemically... It's more of a chemical cut. A reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And then there's different... Different pads. Home pads and then a one for a you know, lighter, you got a polish. Right. Really when we go to buffing it's it's a three stage it's process. Three step process, that's right. And then, exactly. And then your car over the years, the more you buff on it, the more you wax it, it will just look better and better and better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we probably ran over our fifteen minutes in, okay. in FedEx, so we gotta end with, with Ernie. All right. Ernie. He ain't around no more. Really see, remember Ernie. I remember Ernie. Oh, I remember Ernie. I see him occasionally, not very often. So Ernie the Hot Rod Man. Ernie the Hot Ernie Rod Man. Ernie Gilchrist. He wrote these couple books. Okay. And he's a character. He's an artiste. He is very artistic. He's artistic. Yeah, not exactly artistic. Right. He's artistic. Very artistic. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> sure. Ernie, how you doing today? Oh, by the way, we're having a... I'll, I'll invite you to the party later. I don't want to give everybody the date. But okay. You're invited. I'll call you. Um... He wrote these two books. Pick one. Cool. Hey, I like Coffee Break Coffee Break Contemplation. Pick one. You can read one even. How's that? Hey, creating a happy life is like restoring an old motorcycle. With a little effort, one can turn a basket, a basket case into a triumph. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that would be Ernie for you. So we're building hot rods today, but uh, the basket case... Uh, yeah. Motorcycles sure. and the Triumphs, that would be awesome. That's Eric, appreciate it. I'm Thanks, glad you Bob. came out. It's the first yeah, time absolutely. you've been at the new shop. First time? Yeah. I don't know why it took me so long. Well, you're, you're way over Mountain Home. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a the whole day's drive, yeah. not really. Till tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs>